Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Gemology for Schmucks. This right here is my good friend and lapidary artist and lapidary historian, Justin K. Prim. Hello. Last week on his channel, you may have seen our episode where we were making a piece of jewelry from a stone that he had cut. And we went to a wax library where we chose out a pre-made design. But the thing is, a lot of our friends liked it, liked it a little bit too much, and they decided they want their own custom jewelry. So Justin has been working with one of his friends who has carved their own wax just by hand using files and artistry and all of those things. So what we're going to do today is we're going to show you how we would go in, get the ring cast, and then get a mold made of it so that we can make many, as many as we want. Once you have that mold, you can make ad infinitum as many pieces of custom jewelry as you want. So shall we show them? Let's check it out. Here we are on day two. We've gotten our hand carved wax back from the caster and it looks fantastic. All of the details that were hand carved into the wax are preserved now in the casting, which is great. Sometimes in the casting process, depending on who you're working with, there can be issues with the metal. So you just want to make sure you look everything over. There's no pits, there's no missing details, things like that. And you'll notice on the bottom of the ring right here, there's a little pole that's kind of sticking up. This is called a sprue. And that's important for the actual casting process. So if you see that, you know that number one, they're not stealing metal from you, anything like that. And it also gives you assurances that none of the details that you put on the ring have been taken off. Okay, so they added that sprue on there just right. so that they could put it onto the casting tree. That's right. Okay. So the casting tree, they cast more rings at one time, right? Okay. So it's not just one ring and a small piece of sand. You're talking maybe 20 to 50 rings. They can do a variable amount. But in order for this to sit on and the metal to fill in all of these lost wax areas now, they're going to have to have that sprue for everything to connect. Okay. It's like the, the veins in your blood system. Okay. But the sprue is just going to get taken off whenever we get it finished, That's right? right. The so. jeweler is just going to cut that off, file it smooth, you're never going to know it was there. Okay. So this was basically a prototype for my wedding ring. Ooh. Uh, but we, we, we went with a different design, okay. but it was carved by my good friend Sophie uh, at Atelier Suba in Paris. In Paris, okay. So she, she, she hand carved the wax. Okay. She did all the details. You know, we talked a lot online about what I wanted and all these different sort of symbols that we put into the okay. ring. What we decided to do was cast it here because this was an extra one and I just right. thought, okay, I'm going to keep it for fun, you know. Right. So, we're, so yeah, we decided we're going to cast it here and then make a double. So okay. she's going to get one and I'm going to get one. Awesome. So now we have this one, but we need to make the mold before we can make the double. So you want to make multiples. If you want to have more than one, the easiest way to do that, and you can make as many as you possibly want, is by making a silicone mold. They basically just take rubber and squish it together in a sandwich with your now cast ring right in the middle. So what they can do is just take that silicone mold and inject it with wax and make as many wax models as they want. You can make hundreds, you can make thousands of these custom designs now, okay. once you have the mold. So do we need to take this to the polisher and get everything cleaned up and the sprue taken off, or do we take this straight to the, uh, the injection mold people? What I would do is just take this as it is to the, the people that make the mold, okay. because if you go through and you file everything and it gets smaller and smaller, then you're going to lose some detail. So better to leave it as it is. Okay. You can do it either way, but I think it's better to leave it as it is. They have more room to work with okay. uh, when you go to finish the next rings in the future. Let's get the mold. Let's get the mold. Okay, let's do it.
So now that we have the mold, we've, we've made several of these wax. We've cast that one. So that was the second cast. Right. And this and still has the sprue on it. So this, is, this still needs a lot of love. Right. And then we also have the original that now has been set, polished, and full of green, beautiful emeralds. That's right. Which will be my sort of pseudo wedding ring. So if you will. I'm not getting on one knee again. And just as we said before, it hasn't shrunk. Yep. You know, the size fit in the wax. Perfect it fit you. in that's, you know, we can, yeah. Doesn't fit you, no, but it fits me. it's not for me. my hand. <laughs> uh, and it fit all the way. So we can kind of see all three, they're, they're, they're all the same size. Yeah, and you're starting to redefine the idea of stacking rings right now. Yeah, I'm stacking the same like ring. Stackception. Yeah. So, okay, so we've now basically gone through the process of mass production. You know, we, we've, yep. made, we've taken that um, custom ring that we got in the mail from France. Right. We've made a mold, we've made several copies of it, and now if you wanted to like mass produce our line. Somebody else loves it, you can give it to them. Right. So Peter, yes. thank you so much no, for, for, for taking us on this journey. We, through the two videos, the one on mine and the one on yours, we've seen basically every step of jewelry making. Mm -hmm. So if you're cutting your own stone, you right. can make that ring. Right. Or if you're working with a custom jeweler, you can make that ring. Right. And if you're not a gem cutter, you can come to a place like this, the Jewelry Trade Center, where we can basically find any stone in any size. That's right. And we can do it that way as well. Right. It's the so, easiest custom jewelry you could possibly yeah. want. So there's many, many options. And really, as we've seen, the, the sky is the limit in terms of creativity, design, mass production, or, or you know, unique one-of-a-kind items. That's right. So if you've got any interest, you can hit either of us up, either on Justin K. Prim's channel or on my channel, Gemology for Schmucks, and we can talk to you further about options. So until then, I'll just say bye-bye, huh? Thank you, guys, and see you later.